captain. Arsenal haven't beaten Spurs away since 2014. Quite simply, how good does that feel? It was about time then. Uh, but yeah, it felt amazing. Um, yeah, we remember what happened here last year and uh, we wanted to do yeah, a better game, uh, show a different side and uh, show how much we have improved. And I think we did that today and I think we all enjoyed the, the game. Aaron, how much did you feel you were totally in control in that first half? <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, I think we deserved the two goals and we probably deserved maybe more. Um, we played the way we wanted to play the, the whole first half and um, we got the deserved lead, yeah. The first one was a slightly strange goal, but yours was an absolute beauty. Tell us about it and also that goal celebration, basketball, where's that come from? <laughs> nah, it's just something we talk about a lot inside the team, something with basketball, so that's why we did it. And uh, yeah, Rambo tells me to shoot all the time, so finally I, I did it and see what happened. Aaron, you more than played your part as well. Some big saves there, particularly from Saint, from Son and Kane as well. Yeah, that's what I've um, there to do. Uh, the manager also mentioned, obviously, the I think the last quite a few North London derbies we haven't kept a clean sheet either. So, especially when he's been in charge, so I think that might have spurred me on a little bit. Of course, it's been a terrific day for you. But what happened at the end? You seem to be involved with a fan as well. Can you tell us exactly what happened? Yeah, obviously, uh, the Spurs fans were giving me some throughout the second half. I give them some back, um, which to that the few people who I did do it to were was probably well greeted, um, you know, sportsmanship like. And then a fan tried to, well, I jumped over and uh, gave me a little punch in the back. So um, yeah, that's what happened, and uh, it's a shame because it's just a game of football at the end of the day. What happened after that? Were you dragged away? Yeah, yeah everyone. Uh, I think both sets of players as well tried to, you know, bring me away and. Uh, um, but yeah, thankfully nothing actually happened um, too drastically, but uh, it's, a, it's a sour taste, but uh, I'm sure we'll enjoy it when we go back in the dressing room. Eight points is the lead right now. What's the significance of that at this stage of the season? No, we're in a good position. Um, there's no doubt about that, uh, but we have to stay humble. We have to keep working hard. Uh, we can still improve a lot of things. You see today the difference between the first and the second half, so we still have some things to improve, so we have to keep going and keep pushing. Well, it was a fabulous victory. Aaron, you were named the player of the match. Martin, will you hand over the award, please? Thanks, buddy. Well done, bro. Thank you. Cheers. All right, guys. Cheers. This was Arsenal's day, Paul. You said it right from the first moment. You felt it. Why were you so confident? I just, it's just the way Arsenal have been playing and Tottenham have been playing. I mean, it's, it don't take Einstein to work that out. Tottenham are letting in two goals every week. And, and Arsenal are playing the best football they've played. This game in many is always years. different. Yeah, Arsenal know, have been here before, full not, of confidence. Yeah, but not like this. Not like this. They're top of the league. They're flying along. They're beating records. They're on a roll. Yeah, I just, I just couldn't see it. I just couldn't see it with Tottenham. I mean, they play three at the back. They play two old in midfield players, and every week they let in two goals. I mean, I don't know how you get away with it. I mean, it's unbelievable. Part of the Palace game, which if Palace had Harry Kane, as I said before, they would have won 4-0 that day. You can't keep on turning it on and on and off like a tap. And people forget about the second half. The first half was embarrassing mm. at the highest level. I've never seen a derby game. Well, I mean, the, the last one was like that when, when Arsenal got steamrolled. But not really it like, wasn't that. like that. They though, got was steamrolled. It? That was they were outclassed. Yeah, they were outclassed. Just outclassed. Everything, everything Arsenal were doing, you could see there's a plan. You know, there's a patterns of play. And Zinchenko comes inside and Saka will come and then go. And then, you know, Partey will come short and the other two go forward or open the game up. Tottenham, it's cuffy, Tottenham. It's off the cuff. Cuffy. Yeah, if it happens, it happens. It's, you can't see any plan. I mean, the second goal, I, I, and we'll talk about it in a minute, the goal is kicking the ball, 1989. I mean, he's getting the ball and kicking it out of his hands. I mean, that happens on Sunday morning at Wellman Scrubs. Do you know what I mean? You can't do that. There's two centre-halves sitting there waiting for the ball. I feel sorry for the midfield players. They've been left to be embarrassed today. But, but now, as a result of that, Arsenal are eight points clear. Yeah. The biggest lead they've had in the Premier League since they last won the title in 2004. So, do you believe? I, I think it all comes down to next Sunday. I think next Sunday, I think it's the game. I think if Man United go and beat Palace away, you know, which I, I do expect them to do the way they're playing, they go to, go to the Emirates. And I think if, if Man United win that game, they're three points behind Arsenal. If Arsenal win that game, Man United are out of the equation. And it's Man City chasing them down, and they're eight, maybe eight, maybe even more points behind Arsenal. Uh, it's Arsenal's to throw away now. I know there's a lot of points to go, but that first half performance is that, that was like watching Man City. You know, if, if, if you'd yeah. have come, if you'd been living in New Zealand and you ain't seen football for, for the last <laughs> four years, 
and they were playing in light blue, you'd have thought that you were watching Man City. Mm. Th that's how good they were. Louis, I know you were hoping for a big performance from Spurs today, but did Arsenal have the look of potential champions? Yes, definitely. They, they show consistency, brilliance. There, there is like composure, there is technique, but on the same time, there, there is that that uh, calmness that uh, sometimes you, you have to have uh, aggressiveness in your game, but they, they, they've been like brilliant. And uh, the first half, especially when they have uh, the, the, the momentum, um, you, you, you have to have that belief. Um, and they're starting the game really well. They finish with a professional approach in the second half. They didn't panic. They, they, they felt like very composed. And I think that's uh, maybe down to, to Spurs' negativity in some ways. There is like the two sittings remain there all the game. I, I, don't, I don't see that, uh, as Paul just mentioned, and I'm having like no like um, efficacy or so, some kind of like inspiration to to break down the team. Um, it was not enough to, to 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 put any pressure on Arsenal. They were too good today. I think as well, Louis, because derbies are normally frantic. Mm. They don't normally associate a calmness that Arsenal played with yeah. in that first half, especially to come here and play in such an assured manner. I don't think I've seen anything like it for a long time, especially with an Arsenal team that last season came here, they didn't have the capacity to hang on, they ended up losing the top four. They are a completely different proposition, eight points clear. The only thing that I, I feel could get in their own way is maybe a couple of injuries. I look at Thomas Partey in that midfield and the job yeah. he does. If you were to lose him, they haven't got anyone that can come in and do that Mercedes, role. Mercedes, he could have played there. Yeah, but he's so good. Yeah. against Tottenham. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he, won't be, he won't be able to do yeah. that every week. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not, you don't think Man United are going to let him do that next there's a couple of, but that, I, there, There's a couple of little things that will have to go their way, but I must admit, I... I I'm enjoying watching them play. And that's the best 45 minutes of football I've seen all season from a team. Especially in a cauldron like this when you've got to show cool heads. I thought they were magnificent today, Arsenal. Well, well Paul says that. That big test is against Manchester United um, next Sunday at 4.30, live on Sky Sports. First Spurs reaction now. Here's Eric Dyer with Jeff Shree. Put simply, particularly in the first half, was that just a bad day at the office? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, we, we considered... Um, you know, two poor goals. Um, yeah, the first one was just a bit unfortunate. Um, but I, I don't think we started too badly. I think we, we started the game okay. Um, obviously, then they got the first goal, and I think they were a bit more on top. They had maybe the better chances in the in the first half, and then second half we came out and um, yeah, I thought we played really well. Second half, you know, could have easily got back into the game. I think. Uh, Ramsdale made a lot of good saves, um, and I think you know we're just missing that, missing that that goal. If we get the first, then then who knows what happens? Was that similar to a familiar theme this season that you just haven't started quick enough in the first half of games, particularly for North London derby? Did you not have the intensity? No, I don't. I don't. As I said, I don't think we started too badly. I think people will say we did because we obviously went in two 0 at half time, but I don't think we started the game too badly. Um, we had spells of possession in, in their half uh, at nil nil. We just didn't really didn't really create any chance at the end of it. And then, uh, as I said, the first goal was unfortunate. Both both goals are poor. And then and then uh, yeah, they were they, they were the better team in the first half. But I don't think it was as clear as the result would say. Any defeat hurts. But how much does it hurt more when it is the North London derby? No, obviously it's it's not what you want. You, you don't want that. You don't want this here at your own stadium. You never want to lose here, especially against a rival. Um, but yeah, uh, it is what it is. They're they're a very good side. They're, they're top of the table for a reason. Um, and uh, yeah, we, it's over now. It's done. I'm sure to move on. Unfortunately, what's not likely to be done is there was an incident at the end of the game. You probably didn't see it, so I can only try and describe it to you. <laughs> Aaron Ramsdale was picking his water bottle up, and a fan from the top end leant over and kicked him in the back. Mm. That sort of thing, there's just no place for it in football, is there? No, of course not. Obviously, you, you know, you were explaining it to what happened to me a minute ago because I didn't see it. But, um, yeah, it, it, obviously, it's just, it's just unacceptable, really. Um, yeah, there's, there's nothing more I can, I can say other than it's unacceptable and it should never happen. Thank you, Eric. Cheers, thanks. Thanks for that uh, unseemly incident at the end. He says that they had a decent start to the game, Spurs, but within 15 minutes they were one down. How disappointing was the manner with which they conceded this goal, Louis? 
Yeah, some people are going to say, oh, yes, he's, uh, he's unlucky uh, for, for the goalkeeping era, but uh, the, the movement is great. He's starting short, uh, passing, and then he go behind. And then now there is a mistake because he's invited in the box. And that's the easy cross for... So you think the goalkeeper needs more protection there? I think so, yes. You have to defend better or more aggressive. You don't let a player like him go inside the box this way. So you have to attack or maybe make him like uh, make a decision before. And obviously now... It's up to the deflection to actually ask uh, Loris to, to have the best reflex. He didn't. Uh, his hands uh, seems Does to... he need to do better, Jamie? 100%. I've been saying that for a long time about Hugo Loris. He's got a long... He's got five, six yards there to react. I mean, he's falling backwards. It's poor goalkeeping. It's poor goalkeeping last week against Aston Villa. Unfortunately, there are errors that we keep seeing right now. He's been a brilliant goalkeeper for Tottenham. He's a World Cup winner, but there's too many mistakes. He just doesn't react to this at the same level to what he did a few years ago. Well, Paul was critical of um, his involvement in the second goal, a goal kick from 1989. <laughs> but but I, 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 after this, Paul... He doesn't, he doesn't have to do... Yeah, but because he, does, he, cause he does that, because he does that, the Paul centre midfield players have come short and then they've got to go long. And as but we talked about... That's the golfing quality between the two teams. They, they take it after that. Chalk and cheese. Did you win the league in 89? Yeah, but we won it like that. But that's <laughs> how <laughs> you know, When you have a look... When you have a look you have a look, uh, Papsar goes forward here and, and, and he opened the, the, the thing. Yeah, and oh. then he's late to the, to the, to the ball on he's Odegaard. Late. But I, so. see Liber I see Liverpool do that against Arsenal live. But all of a sudden, Odegaard got away and he put Martinelli in and Martinelli scored. But here again, I, I felt sorry for the two midfield players. They're getting the play against three of the best players at Arsenal. But the finish from Odegaard, his eighth yeah. of the season, he's the top scorer. A Rolls Royce of a player, isn't he? Ah, different, different gravy. Honestly, different gravy. Uh, his, his brain, his awareness, every, he makes every right decision. If you watch him on a football pitch, he, he is, you could see why he was at Real Madrid at 16, 17 years of age. Yeah, the kids are, it, it, He's one of the best in the Premier League. With, you know, we talk about Kevin De Bruyne, of course, he's the number one. He's number two. He's number two. He, yeah. he makes things happen, you know. And it's so hard to pick him up because Partey's so good. Really yeah. smart but piece he's so of business. smooth on the ball as yeah. well. But Paul made a really good point in that because when, you, when you've got a 2v3, because Arsenal outnumber you in there. They've got, they've got uh, Granit Xhaka, mm. Odegaard and Thomas Partey in the pivot. And it made it so difficult. So for Tottenham, I actually felt sorry for their two midfield players. Hoiberg and Saar, they're trying to get close to him. They're trying to push up into areas, trying to make it a 2v2. You can see there they're trying to engage onto Thomas Partey. But, but what you've got to remember is behind you, you've got such a threat in Odegaard. Then all of a sudden, you've got a 10, 15-yard exactly. gap. Saka pulls into an area. Now, he's got 20 yards of open space. You've got Saar, Hoiberg, they're, they're too late. Now, you can see it opens up. Saka plays the perfect pass to him. He's got time to get it out of his feet and hit a beautiful strike. And that was a problem. The 2v3 in there, they always got out but he tried to change it a bit second half. But they're not just three players that are average. They are three quality players that know their role. You've got Partey in the pivot, then you've got the two midfield players, with Xhaka mm -hmm. and Odegaard, that cause you such problems. Because a midfielder, you don't know whether to go out to them, you don't know whether to stay in the middle. They just keep popping it round you. And then also, you add to that, Zinchenko comes into that midfield as well. So all the time, they're doing a Man City on you. You can't get near anybody. Yeah, I feel sorry for the two midfield because what Partey does there is just an unbelievable bit of play. To turn and get it out wide. A lot of centre midfield players have controlled it and gone back to Ben White. Mm. And, the, and the centre midfield players job's done and they're like I've done a good job because he's so good and so smooth he gets on the turn he plays it out wide and they're away and I felt sorry for the, the two in midfield will sleep but that's well a tonight. debate you know where he's saying and trying to have like the the moment, momentum but some some confidence in midfield until you find a proper center midfield with the the position right making sure that you have the aggression aggression but the technique the calmness you, you're going to get in trouble. be that player, not yes, here today. I obviously. think that Conte has been asking that, that player. You know, you could have like a lot of talent, but you need to have that experience. The, the, the Partey, the, the Casimiro, the, the Fabinho, all those players have like immense influence on the team. You, you, you say it could he, but he is that player. He is that big a blow, I think, for Tottenham, for him not to be playing at the moment. He got injured in the World Cup. You can see the difference when he mm. plays. The results since he's been out of the team have been... Um, it's a massive shift. Do they find it harder to keep the ball without him? Massively, because he takes the ball in tight areas, he can drive with it, he adds a goal-scoring threat as well. It's huge not having him in the team. You've got two very similar players, yeah. you know, in Saar and Hoiberg. You need that bit of class and 
that's what they haven't got when he plays. Kulicheski's still not quite at the level because he had an injury. And you do miss Benson. It's not enough of an excuse. Because what compounds it more than anything for Spurs is that Arsenal are playing such great football. And when these... You don't mind. If you're playing that type of football that Tottenham are playing, you've got to win. And the fact that they're not and Arsenal are playing such good football makes it even worse for the fans. If you're playing free at the back like Tottenham play, your best two players have got to be your wing-backs. Because they've got to get up and down. They're not their best two players. You look at Chelsea, when they play three at the back, they have Chilwell and James. They're the best in the business. You know, Tottenham's, they're not. They're probably their two weakest players, really. Well, no, yeah, and defensively, Sessegnon, Saka was just too much from the yeah, first Yeah, too much. He's not, for me, he's not that kind of player, is he? And he should have been helped. I felt sorry for him. You know, he's getting isolated. 1v1, I don't care who you are. If someone's run at you with Saka, pace, yeah. you're going to get ripped to shreds.